Have you ever wondered what a sickle bar can do on a 1025R or subcompact tractor? We're going to find out now. We've got a lot to cover today. We're going to cover the pros and cons of a sickle bar mower, and we're going to discuss a variety of uses, actually two major uses for such a mower. We're going to show you in detail how the mechanism works. We're going to talk about how well it fits Johnny, the subcompact tractor class. We'll go in depth with how the lift mechanism works. We'll also talk about cut quality. Yeah, we're going to be busy today. A lot of information packed into this episode, so sit back and enjoy. I'm able to get in here and trim really well, uh, as long as I'm patient. Of course, it doesn't mow going backwards, but I can back right in against the base of that guy wire. I can swing the tractor, you know, with a little bit of practice, I, I can swing in and get a, a lot of this mowed down. And again, as long as I'm going slowly, I can see what's, what's out here. There's a piece of tin here, there's a big rock out there. Uh, I'll be able to go over both of those and, and shouldn't hit anything. Obviously, if you were going fast through the field, you might not see that stuff, but at this particular place, I'm just trying to do some trimming. Hey, please take a moment, press that subscribe button. After you do that, press that bell right beside it so you'll get notified of our new episodes. You know, we don't see many sickle bar mowers for subcompact tractors or even compact tractors. New ones, that is. You might find an old one. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, but this is a brand new sickle bar mower. It's from Machio. This is almost six feet. I think it's 69 inches. So just a few inches short of six feet. This mower, the identical mower, is also sold as a Frontier mower. So if you see the Frontier mower from your John Deere dealer, it is identical to the mower we're looking at now. Well, it's a different color. Other than that, it's identical. So let's talk a little bit about a sickle mower. What's the benefits? What's the advantages, disadvantages? We'll go through that as this episode continues. The basic operation of a sickle bar is really simple. These points out here we always call guards. Pretty obvious reason for that, it's to guard from rocks or extra large obstacles of any kind getting into the cutter bar. This whole piece here is called the cutter bar with these little triangle pieces called sections. Some people call the whole bar a knife and the individual pieces sections. So that's a, that's a good way to look at it. This same concept is used in soybean and wheat headers on combines. It's been around for, I don't know, 100 years probably, uh, with very little change. This Machio one has a, a little twist that the earlier ones didn't have, and that is that both the sections on the cutter bar knife and the guards move. The older ones that we saw when I was a kid, the guards were fixed in place the sections, the knife, was the only thing that moved, and it moved far enough to cut from one guard back to the other. With this one, you get a little bit of double action, so it should be, in a sense, uh, cutting faster, right, by having the guards and the sections move. The primary use of a sickle bar is for hay. Almost all hay was cut with a sickle bar when I was a kid, and then they invented uh, a, a kind of an addition to a sickle bar called a conditioner, and that was two rollers that compressed the hay and essentially kind of cracked it or opened it up just a little bit so it would dry faster. And those were two rollers that rolled against each other right behind the sickle bar. That was called a mower conditioner. We still see some of those used today, but uh, for the most part, the large hay producers have moved to a disc mower, and that has uh, a number of round discs, probably you know this size, 18 inches, two feet, I don't know, in diameter, and they all spin along a, a cutter bar that looks similar to this, but they spin. Uh, with those, you can, you can cut at a faster speed. Uh, I'm not certain whether the cut is better or it just kind of allows you to go faster. I'm not really a hay expert, but I just kind of wanted to, to expose you to, to that concept. But a lot of smaller operations still use a sickle bar just like this uh, for mowing their hay. Uh, the way they handle it is they mow the hay one day, let it dry. The next day they use what they call a tetter. With that tetter, they, 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 they stir it all up, they let it dry one more day. Then they use a rake to push it into what we call windrows. And with those windrows, then we can run a baler right along there 
and bale that up on the usually the third day. So that's kind of the hay making process. These sickle bar mowers are very simple. They're less expensive than a disc mower. They're lightweight, easy to handle for a small tractor like this. So it's an interesting combination that's maybe coming back into style a little bit more as more and more of these compact and subcompact tractors begin to be used for haymaking opportunities. People that have a, a few horses might decide they want to raise their own hay. Well, it's becoming practical to actually have your own hay equipment at this point. Uh, a few years ago, that just, that just wasn't possible or wasn't practical unless you kept old, old equipment. So while hay is the primary use of uh, this mower, I actually think it has some other uses for subcompact tractor owners more in the just general mowing uh, opportunities, something I've been wanting to investigate for a long time. So we're here at the Tower Project, and that's what we're gonna do today, is just do some mowing out here, uh, used in a similar situation where we would use any other type of mower. Then we're gonna go check out some more specialty situations where this mower really shines. Earlier I mentioned we might discuss some older mowers. If you're up for a little adventure, you can probably buy an International Harvester 1300 sickle bar mower for about $1,000, maybe less. This is an incredible mower. It was made probably from the 60s all the way into the 2000s. I don't really know if it can be configured such that the 1025R can pick it up, but it would be a fun adventure. This area that we've chosen to mow is incredibly rough. It's, it's not very good to, to demonstrate the mower in that sense because I can't go fast enough to really show you what the mower could do. The only reason I'm going so slow is because I can hardly stay on the tractor. But it's doing a good job mowing. The sickle bar runs quietly. It's not nearly as noisy as the other types of mowers we use. It's also a bit cleaner for the operator. It's not throwing grass clippings at you. And you drive along in an already cut path so you don't have as many bugs up in your face. Let's take just a moment to talk about the cut quality, the differences in cut from a, a, an other type of mower, and uh, just, just some unique things about this mower. Let's look at where we've cut here just a little bit. You'll notice that, well, besides from it being so rough that we've cut in the ground, I mean, I, this is a horrible place to be demonstrating this because it's so rough. I had no idea it was so rough here. We may need to try that a little bit different place in a minute, but um, it cuts the grass very cleanly, but it leaves it all in one piece. Obviously there's no mulching. It doesn't attempt to mulch. For hay, that's perfect. You want that grass all left together for hay. That's wonderful. Now, a lot of people who are mowing to make something look nice might think that this type of cut is not very desirable. And, and we understand that. That's one of the weaknesses of a sickle bar mower is that it just lays everything out behind the mower and then it, it kind of, at least for a few days, looks pretty bad. What you will notice is that over time that, that dissipates, and, and it dissipates pretty rapidly. You might even find that it, it dissipates as rapidly or more rapidly than a, it does from a bush hog because it is spread so thin, right? So it, over time it doesn't have that much negative impact, but we certainly understand uh, that particular disadvantage. Now, when we're talking about cut and we're talking about this tall grass, Let's look at this piece over here. Now I've intentionally left it down in the cutting position, right, because I've shown how it allows that grass or actually forces that grass off of the cutter bar to go in and kind of lay over to the inside. At first when you saw this you might have thought it was some sort of a safety feature. Well actually that's not true at all. Uh, all of these sickle bar mowers as far back as I know have had this piece. Now some people remove them, some farmers remove them. Sometimes they drag up a little bit and cause more trouble. Now, not all of them have this. I'm not really sure that this is that important, but I guess it's intended to help you see where the end of your bar is. At least on this mower, I feel like I can see the bar very nicely. But the main purpose of this is to route that heavy grass over here and leave an area about a foot wide at the end of your swath that has no cut grass in it. Why do we want that? Look at the next pass. The skid shoe right here where that gearbox is 
can run right in that area where there's no cut grass. And that way it doesn't bunch up. It doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't get all choked up there. It's running in a nice clean area without any grass. So that's the primary reason. I don't even know what the term is, what the name of that piece is. Some of you guys that have used sickle bars longer than me probably know what that piece is called. But that's the point of it, is to keep that grass brought in, leave yourself about a foot that's free from cut grass to avoid choking up. You know, the rough conditions here, how bumpy it is in this particular area, do illustrate one of the positive things, believe it or not, about this uh, sickle bar versus another type of mower that can mow offset of the tractor. You know, we showed that flail from the same company in a previous episode. We showed it on the 1025R and we showed how it was just all the 1025R wanted out to the side. It really, it, it put some, you know, put some strain. I don't know if I'm gonna say strain on the tractor, but it certainly put some, some strain because of the light weight. It wanted to tip the tractor up. We had no tipsiness at all here. Um, this mower is much lighter weight. That's a, almost a six foot cutting width. And it's probably eight foot out from the tractor. Um, and it doesn't seem to cause any trouble at all. Now when I have it raised up, you can kind of see that the eye match is angling downward. Uh, I don't really worry about that because when I lower it down, it takes care of it. And overall, with the hydraulic cylinder, yeah, we need to talk about that. I can raise it up such that our lift height is just phenomenal. Uh, I don't know if I'm even all the way up at this point. No, I've got uh, a little bit more. I think I could raise it up at this point. The lift height is just unbelievable uh, on this for a subcompact tractor. Very well suited in that sense. Let's talk about this hydraulic cylinder a little bit. This is a one-way cylinder, meaning it will only power up. So it only has one hose. So we always talk about how there's two hoses with any hydraulic cylinder, one that powers in and one that powers out on the cylinder. This one only has the power inward, so it can, it can suck the cylinder up. It depends on gravity to allow that uh, boom or bar to, to fall. So when I push down on the lever, it's just allowing it to go down. It doesn't force it to go down. Okay, you know back with the flail mower, I told you how I was working on getting a kit that allowed you to do the mid hydraulics of the tractor back to the rear of the tractor. I have that finalized now. Let's take a look. Okay, this kit consists of two hoses. They're long enough to go from the mid SCV back to the rear, and they have the half inch ag style couplers on the rear, which is what the two series and on up use on their uh, SCVs on the rear. So this is, is standard uh, hydraulics. Now, with the new Johnny, if you missed it in the last episode, this is a brand new Johnny. We actually got the Deer third function kit. So we're able to use this kit plugged into the third function. That allows us full functionality of the loader, and we use the third function to raise the mower. Works very well here. The same kit can be used, if you don't have a third function, you can use the existing, you know, take one of the SCVs away from your loader or just take your loader off, put weights on the front of the tractor and use this kit. That's how we had it hooked up for the flail mower. We were actually using both SCVs, therefore using the joystick to raise our flail mower as well as to extend it inward and outward. This kit's available at discounthydraulichose.com slash TTWT. Now, you need to put the slash TTWT on the end of that URL because that will take you directly to this kit and any other kits that I might have recommended from Discount Hydraulic Hose. That allows you to avoid the searching. And, and that's why we do that with, with other vendors as well, where we have a slash TTWT. It's not for any just tracking or whatever. It's to get you directly to what we're talking about on these videos to make it easy for you. So discounthydraulichose.com slash TTWT. The kit is there. I think this kit runs $105. Then you get a 5% discount with code TTWT. The kit comes with, uh, I believe, five and a half, six and a half foot hoses. If you don't like exactly what's in the kit, uh, you can actually order the independent parts. You still get a discount on any order. At Discount Hydraulic Hose, you get the TTWT discount. The kit won't come assembled. You'll have to assemble it yourself. 
So you either need to uh, add a roll of Teflon tape to your order, I think they said it's 75 cents, or you can get some other uh, pipe dope that's meant for hydraulics. Um, either approach can work. Then you'll need to assemble the hoses yourself. It just takes some basic wrenches. This is a poor man's way to get yourself SCVs at the rear. You could do this up to three times if you have a third function. So that would be three instances of the kit um, would get you three SCVs to the rear. The kit has two hoses, so you only need one kit for each SCV that you want to route to the rear of the tractor. Now you might be asking what these hoses are here. These are the third function to my loader boom. So I've disconnected them to connect to the third function in there. So they just kind of sit here for now. If I had a place to tie them up somewhere, I would do that, but they've so far just been perfect sitting right here on the floorboard. You know, it's different when you're gonna be using something eight hours a day for weeks than it is when you may have one little area to mow or just wanna use something for a while. You can get by with stuff kind of strung out over the floorboard. I don't find it interfering at all with the uh, hydrostatic pedals or my heel, uh, so it's really not been a problem. Hey, Christy, let's go find a smoother place to mow. Maybe over there where we mowed in April with the TS-10. Sounds good. To start with over here, I didn't have any real plan of attack. I just saw some heavy grass and started mowing. So really just taking out through the middle like that's not the best way to go. I'm not sure what kind of grass this is, but it grows really fast. I mowed this area very recently with thinning. We've had a little bit of trouble finding hay-like grass. To those of you who make hay, that makes sense. This has got some milkweeds and stuff in it. I don't think anybody would want to make hay of it, but I did see this grass and it, it does kind of lay down like hay would. It gives you, it gives you a good, uh, just a, a good look at what it's gonna look like after it's been mowed with a sickle bar mower. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rake this back so that you can see the cut. So that's just a sample area right there where you can see the cut is very low, okay? It's a perfect cut quality. Nothing is left standing. So from a cut standpoint, it's doing a great job. I was going as kind of as fast as I could in this little area here. This is, again, not exactly where you would mow hay because you just get out and go. Um, it's easy for me to run as fast as it'll go in low range and not have any damage and cut. I haven't been in an area yet where I could run in high range and actually try it. I know that my dad did all of the sickle mowing when I was young, and he ran fast. He ran probably seven, eight miles per hour when he was using a sickle bar. That's pretty fast uh, on the farm. I'm not able to get to a place where I can actually run that fast. We just don't have enough space here. We're hoping to find some hay that we can mow sometime later this summer. Working with one guy, I don't know, we may, if, if you have hay that uh, you'd like to have mowed and you think this six foot mower would be an interesting to show on your property, let us know in the comments. We'd be more than happy to come and uh, play with this mower on your property as long as it's in Indiana. Well, this area here was somewhat representative of hay. So this gives a, a little idea of what it's gonna look like when it's uh, mowed. Uh, this is probably not as heavy as most Midwest hay would be because, well, we'd already mowed this once. It's not quite time for a second cutting. Yeah, it's, you know, it's not as heavy, but it still gives, it was heavy enough to give a look of what it's going to look like after it's mowed. I'm mowing in high range here, nearly as fast as the tractor will go. I didn't quite have a long enough through here to get fully up to speed, maybe. I do notice that it doesn't cut quite as good. The, the, the cut quality is not perfect when I'm going quite that fast. So probably somewhere in the six to seven mile per hour range, maybe up to eight is, is uh, acceptable. Anything beyond that is probably just a little bit too fast. We got one more thing we want to test with this mower and describe to you a little bit. This mower will mow all the way vertical. It will also mow 65, or if you do some adjustments back here, 75 degrees downward. Let's see if we can mow a ditch bank with it. Okay, well, this is a pretty good angle. 
it's probably 25 degrees. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's not. It's you know it's not near the extreme the mower can do. But I want to describe some of the, the choices I have here in, in allowing that bar to go down. I have a, a challenge up here at the top. I have all these rocks right here in the road. I don't want to have my mower down in the rocks uh, up here at this end. The second thing is, is that the actual curve of the hill, the curve of the ditch bank, is a, a little further out than the beginning of the mower. So if I put this mower all the way down, not only will I hit the rocks, I will hit the edge of the hill there and the boom will stick straight out. By raising that, this three-point hitch up, I can, I can raise up this side of the mower and that'll allow the, the outside of the boom to go down. So I have to kind of monitor both controls here. This is one of the reasons I like the hydraulic lift option on this mower. It gives me more control than what I would have if I had the manual lift. So it just cuts it all Yeah. and kind of leaves it all bunched. That's interesting because it looked like it was still standing up. Yeah, it did. I see you, you're wanting to clean that up. Uh-huh, yeah, you know me. That, that's my one thing with it. It doesn't leave you with that satisfied mowing, you know. Okay, I'm gonna test the stability a little bit because it's one thing to cut the first six foot when I'm up level like this. I'm actually gonna try to get down on that bank a little bit and get the rest of that ditch. With the offset flail mower, this would have been kind of difficult with Johnny because Johnny is so lightweight, he would have been tipsy at, at that point. But I'm actually pretty confident with this bar mower, this sickle bar mower, that I'll be able to get on some angle and still not feel like I'm going to roll over. Okay, so there was no issue whatsoever. I had no problem with that bank. Uh, it didn't turn out to be as steep on the tractor as I thought it might, so maybe it wasn't the perfect test there. But the one issue I did have was when I was running over the pre-cut area, the low ground clearance of Johnny dragged that up, and I was dragging it up all along there. Uh, that was kind of difficult to, to work with, but if a guy cut a little bit more often, it wouldn't, wouldn't be an issue at all. I guess what I'm saying is, is that when it comes to mowing your ditch banks, your pond banks, areas that you can't reach with a, you know, an undermounted mower or a, a three-point mower, there are some compromises, right? Uh, if you've got a little Johnny, this might be just the right ticket because it doesn't tax the tractor. It doesn't make you have that tipsy feeling. The compromise, of course, is that it doesn't mulch the grass. I, I think we're kind of showing two separate purposes with this mower, right? We're showing the use it for hay cutting, but we're also showing it for using the, the offset, the ditch bank approach. I want to show you one more aspect of this mower. I want to give you a little bit more detailed look of this hydraulic lift that I've been talking about. This lever here, there's a there's actually a, a pull cord here on the left side of the, the, the tractor. And when I pull that cord, this flops up. When this flops up high enough, that's what allows it to rotate all the way to the vertical position. If I don't pull that lever, it brings a bar in right against here, and that's what helps me pick up the rest of the mower. The design here is really nifty in how it enhances the three-point hitch. The three-point hitch has a limited range. This helps that, right? The, typically the spring is the only thing that holds it up, but when you pull this tight with the cylinder, you keep pulling it, it actually tends to, to turn the mower this direction and pick it up, pick up the bar more, and I, I really like that. Overall impressions. This mower is easy on the tractor. It doesn't even come close to maxing out the horsepower. Uh, I don't know how much you could run horsepower-wise, but you certainly could run another couple of feet without any issues. I would think in any conditions from a mowing standpoint. Another couple of feet might begin to make it feel tipsy, I don't know, don't have an opportunity to test that. There's no danger of it throwing things, right? A bush hog or a flail, a flail has less, you just don't see sticks and all flying out of it, brush flying out of it. There is a little more maintenance to this mower because these sections are not quite as tough maybe as uh, the big blades on a brush hog type mower. I like trimming with this mower. It takes some practice, but once you get in practice, you can use the, the fact that it's far enough behind you to get around stuff and actually trim pretty close. I'm not fully there with, with, with that practice yet, but I, I like the concept and you can get under things. It's, it, it's nice in that regard. Overall, this is a unique mower. If you need one, you probably know it. If you don't need one, like I've said before, you probably think, oh, this is the stupidest thing in the world. Nobody wants one of these. Just remember that not everybody's situation is the same. They are kind of expensive. They're somewhere near $5,000 on one side or the other of it. I'm not exactly sure. Go to agfolks.com. 
Use coupon code TTWT, you get a 5% discount, can have it shipped directly to you. It's also available in green from your Frontier Deer dealer, same mower. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.